Hey everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to start off on a new outcome, RF67, which is Forms of Linear Relations. Um, you can go ahead and download a PDF copy of this lesson on our D2L shell. Uh, remember all you need to do is click the content icon at the top of D2L. Then you want to go to Lou. And then you want to look under the RF67 tab along the left side of your D2L screen um, to find that PDF copy. All right, so some of the key ideas that we're gonna cover in RF six and seven, um, we're really just gonna focus in on three different forms. The first one being slope intercept form, which will be the focus of today's video. We're gonna talk a little bit uh, about what it means for us to look at something that looks like y is equal to mx plus b. We're gonna look at something called general form later on. And then finally, we're gonna end off with point slope form or slope point form. And I know some of these are gonna look really, really complicated. Uh, and some of you guys might get frustrated with how complicated they look, but we're gonna try our best to take things slowly, break it down and give you guys a number of steps you can follow to make things a little bit easier for yourself. All right. Um, some of the things that we're going to be doing with these equations is being able to figure out an equation if we're given a graph, if we're given a point and the slope, two points on a graph, or just a point and the equation of some sort of parallel or perpendicular line. Um, if you're feeling a little foggy about parallel and perpendicular lines, you want to make sure that you want to go back to RF3 and you want to review some of those notes um, prior to those lessons. So looking um, at this page here, we've got forms of linear equations. So a couple of key characteristics that I want to take uh, note of first is that linear equations are going to have a degree of one. Okay, so what does it mean for something to have a degree of one? Well, let's look at an example, y is equal to two x plus one. And something that we notice about our variables, y and x, is that they both have an exponent of one for both of them. So that's really y to the power of one is equal to two x to the power of one plus one. So since your highest exponent or your largest exponent on any variable in that equation is one, that means that your degree of the entire equation is one. Now, a counter example to that would be, that it would be something that looks like this y is equal to 5x squared. Now we note that this squared means that that x has an exponent of 2, which makes that whole equation have a degree of 2. So this would be a non-example um, of a linear equation. This would be called a quadratic equation. Okay, so quadratic equations have a degree of 2, and you'll learn about that uh, in math at the 20 level. Okay, um, the next point that I wanna point out here is we've got at least one x or y value uh, in the equation, okay? So what that means for us is we need to make sure it looks at least something like this first example that we had, y is equal to two x plus one, or we could have x is equal to five, or we could also have something that looks like y, or sorry, y is equal to negative three. So any of those three examples would be an example um, of a linear equation. Note that they all have at least one x or y value. So again, uh, we talked about the three forms already. And the one that I wanna highlight for this video and the next one is what we call slope intercept form. Now the name of the form actually gives away a lot of what we're actually gonna be talking about today. Um, which is really just um, how do we figure out what e each individual component of this equation uh, represents? Where does the y come from? Where does the m come from? Where does the x come from? And what does the b represent in this uh, equation? So just as a quick reminder, hopefully you guys remember from RF3, the slope outcome, we know that m represents your slope. And slope is represented by rise over run. Okay, so again, 
if your slope is equal to four thirds, that means that we're gonna move four units up and then three units to the right. Okay, so four units up and three units to the right. Now I apologize that um, some of the writing is gonna overlap on my iPad. It's a little difficult to, uh, to make everything line up. So I do apologize. The last thing I wanna point out on this page in particular um, is understanding that whichever form of a linear equation that we look at or whichever form we use, we can actually convert them to each other. So what I mean by that is that if we take our slope intercept form, we can actually turn it into general form at some point. We can take the general form, we can turn it back into slope intercept form. We could turn point slope form into slope intercept form. We could turn point slope form into general form. So they are all equivalent to each other. They can all be represented by different equations yet all have the same exact graph. So on this page, we're going to take a look at a couple of examples where we're going to need to figure out um, the m value, the b value, and identify exactly what our linear equation is going to look like um, with those variables. Again, I want to just highlight the fact that your m represents your slope. Okay, so what we're going to do first in the example on the left is we're going to take a look um, at that graph and try to figure out what that slope is. Now each graph has an equation that is associated with it. So the first one we have is y is equal to negative two-thirds x minus one. Now if we take a look at that graph there, uh, we want to look for two lattice points. So remember a lattice point is any point that is right on the intersection of two grid lines. So the first lattice point that we're going to look at is this one right over here and the second lattice point that we'll use is going to be this one right here. So if we look at um, our slope between those two points we'll notice to go that in order to go from this point here on the left down to the point here on the right we need to move two units down which means that our rise is a negative two and then we're going to have a run of three units to the right. So our slope, or m value, is negative 2 thirds. All right. So again, we want to take a look at that negative 2 thirds, and we want to relate it back to the equation. Well, we, know, we notice that in our equation, we see a negative 2 thirds right where our m value is going to be. So this number, this coefficient beside our x value, is our slope, and we just take it directly from our equation. Now next uh, we have the value of negative 1. So we can see here if we look at, a, at my two values I'm gonna have my plus b here and we want to try to figure out what that value is in this situation. Now in our given linear equation if we look at the b and we look at the negative 1 well it should be a negative 1. Now, how does that relate to the actual graph itself? Well, there's actually a really special point on this graph here where negative 1 is found, and we actually look at our y-intercept. So again, your y-intercept is where that graph crosses the y-axis. So we can figure out that this value here tells us where on the graph the, uh, it tells us where our graph will intersect that y-axis. And in this case, it happens to be at negative 1. I want to take a look at that second example by first looking at two lattice points. So our first lattice point, let's go ahead and use this point right here. And my second lattice point, we're going to use this one right there. So again, we're going to figure out what's our rise over run between the two points? So to go from left to right, we're gonna go up two units and then one to the right, which means that our slope is two. And because our slope is represented by M, that M has to be equal to two. 
we're going to once again examine what our b value is going to be equal to and our b value in this case ends up being negative 1 again so we want to look and figure and figure out what does that negative 1 come into play well again it's going to be where our graph crosses the y-axis so in this case it's going to be down there at negative 1. Now for this third and final example we're going to look again at two lattice points so the first one that we're going to look at is let's use that one and then we're going to use this one right there and again going from left to right I want to count how many I go up so one two three units up and we're going to move one unit to the right which means that our slope is going to be three now next we want to figure out what our b value is equal to and by now hopefully we've, we've realized that our b value is really just where our graph crosses the y-axis we can see here that it crosses the y-axis at 2 which means that our b value is going to be a positive 2 All right, so the takeaway from this section is again that M represents your slope, but a little bit more of a newer concept is that your B value or your variable B actually represents your Y intercept. Let's look at a couple of equations here. Or let's look at a couple of examples here where we're given our m and b values and we need to figure out what the corresponding linear equation will be in slope intercept form. So just for reference, I'm gonna go ahead and write down your slope intercept form. So y is equal to mx plus b. So in this first example, we have m is equal to four, b is equal to negative three. That just means I need to replace these values. So for us, all of these m values, we want to go ahead and slot it into where that m would normally be. And as for your b values, you want to slot all of these into where that b uh, would be normally. Okay. Again, I kind of apologize for the miss uh, the misalignment of all of those highlights. It just looks a little bit different on my iPad. Uh, so let's go ahead and try a couple of these out. So first of all, we've got m is 4, b is negative 3. So if I were to write these down, we have y is equal to 4x minus 3. Okay, so y is equal to 4x minus 3. That 4 slots right there beside the x. And that negative 3, remember it's plus b, so we could think of it as plus a minus 3. So we have 4x minus 3. The second example, we end up having y is equal to negative 1x, or just y is equal to negative x, plus 2. Third example, we'll end up with y is equal to 7 over 4x plus 5. So a question I'm, I'm anticipating from you guys is, um, how do I know where the x goes beside? Well, there's a couple different ways we could write it down. Some people might decide to write it as 7x over 4 plus 5. Some people might write 7 over 4x plus 5. And there's the method, or there's the way that I wrote it. Y is equal to 7 over 4, and the x just goes right beside it, plus 5. Um, please just use that last one. Uh, it just makes things a lot easier for yourself because you'll be able to clearly identify that your slope is 7 over 4. Okay, it's going to be your coefficient of x, whereas these two, while they're mathematically equivalent, it's going to be a little bit uh, tougher to differentiate between the two. All right, so let's go ahead and finish up that last example. Uh, M is equal to negative three, three over two, and B is equal to negative nine. We'll have Y is equal to negative three 
over 2 x minus 9. So the last portion of today's video uh, we're going to talk about how to come up with a linear equation if we are actually given um, the graph of a certain line. So for this example here again we're going to take a look at two things. We're going to look first for the slope and second we're going to look for the y-intercept. Okay so remember that m represents your slope, b represents your y-intercept. So we're going to look for those two things. So again with your slope if we're given a graph it's fairly straightforward um, to figure out what your slope is. We're going to look for two lattice points. So I'm going to use this one here and we're going to go all the way down over here. So just going from left to right we're going to count how many units we're moving down. So we got one, two, three, four units down and then five units to the right which means that your slope is negative is negative 4 over 5. So negative 4 over 5. Your b value in this case is where your y-intercept is. So your y-intercept actually happens to be right there. So you have a y-intercept is equal to 4 or you have it at your coordinate point 0, 4. So that means that your b value is 4. When we combine everything together, we'll end up with a linear equation of y is equal to negative 4 over 5x. Let me clean that up a little bit. y is equal to negative 4 over 5x plus 4. So y is equal to negative 4 over 5x plus 4. Taking a look at the second problem here, we want to do the same thing where we look for our two lattice points. Let's go ahead and start off with this one here. And then a second one will be right there. We can see going from left to right, we're going to look for the slope. We're going two units down, which means that our rise is negative 2. And we have a run of positive 1. So it's negative 2 over 1, or just a negative 2 for your slope. And your B value, your y-intercept, if you look here, your graph intersects the y-axis when it is at a positive 2 or at the point 0, 2. So B is a positive 2. This leaves us with a linear equation, y is equal to negative 2x plus 2. For this third example, we've got, again, we're going to look for two lattice points. So let's use one there and let's use and let's use one over here just to mix it up a little bit. So we notice here we're going to move two up and then one to the right which gives us a slope of positive two. Your b value is where your graph intersects that y axis so again we're going to count up here and we have a b value of positive four so remember your y-intercept here is at 0, positive 4, which means that your b-value is 4. We can substitute in those, um, those values, and we'll get y is equal to 2x plus 4. Last but not least, uh, example number 4, we're once again going to look for two lattice points. Let's use this one right here, and the second one we can put right there. Between those two points, we're going to move up one and then two to the right, which means that our slope is one half. So it moves up one and then two to the right. And your b value is where it crosses the y intercept. So we see here that it crosses the y intercept at the point zero, negative four. So that means that our b value is negative four. Our resulting linear equation is y is equal to 1 over 2x minus 4. So that's at the end of today's uh, video. We're going to be back with part 2 of using slope-intercept form. See you later.